It started off as an unlikely player entering the crowded cannabis space. But Tilray caught market watchers off guard when the price of its shares skyrocketed to over 800% of its IPO, making it the largest cannabis company in the world almost overnight. Most experts agree that this massive increase had something to do with a small float. So small float is uh, typically when, a, when you've got a publicly traded company and only a, a small percentage of their shares are actually available to buy and sell in the market. The vast majority of the shares are typically held by insiders or founders or family members depending on the type of business and they have no interest in offering shares in the market to, to sell to generate trading activity which leads to a lot of volatility because it's a supply and demand thing. If there's a, only a few amount of shares out there, for example, someone wants to buy, they're going to have to pay through the nose to buy it as opposed to more liquid stock where it's easy to get in and out. So, for example, a company that has, let's say, 100 million shares, if only 2 million shares were able to trade, and whatever's going on with that 2 million shares would impact uh, the whole 100 million in terms of valuation. In their initial public offering of $22 on the NASDAQ on July 19th, Tilray only released 10% of their stock. This led to a rise in their share price as investors only had a limited amount of shares open to them. By September 19th, it had shot up to $214, an 800% increase from its IPO. Since then, the stock price has dropped even below the $100 mark. So are small floats a good strategy for companies hitting the stock market? There's a, it's a double-edged sword. So on the plus side of things is if they announce something positive and uh, the, you know, people out there want to buy and get exposure to the stock, they've got a, it's a frenzy to find shares because uh, you know, there's not a lot of shares out there. So if there's like only 10 shares available at a high price, that's the price they're going to have to pay. Uh, the downside is if something negative happens and somebody who is a Tilray shareholder wants to get off their position, uh, they're going to have to probably you know, sell at all sorts of prices to get off it at lower and lower prices. So you can go down very quickly the same way you go up very quickly. Unfortunately, it creates a false sense of what the company's worth, but we'll see. It's, it's, this is really tough. And despite the volatility associated with small floats, it's a strategy that's becoming more popular. I, I believe that we're seeing this uh, pretty much across all the new IPOs, a, a relatively tight float to begin with, especially the U.S. companies going public in Canada, where uh, a lot of the shares are put into, support, uh, into super voting rights and uh, other types of convertible securities. So I think we better get used to these tight floats. For Midas Letter Live, I'm Liz West.